All right, so let's learn something new. So this uh, lecture is something on centroid or center of gravity and also friction. So this is going to be a two in one, a very short lecture. So if you see uh, in front here, there are a few diagrams and uh, you have this block. This block has a center of gravity at the center here, CG. So as this block is being rotated or turning and turning, the location of CG slightly shifts away to the right hand side. But definitely uh, MG is still going down, right? So MG is going down. So you can check stability of objects if you were to apply certain forces, if it were any on uh, any initial load, we can check whether it's going to, to, to be tilted over, unstable using uh, principles of uh, centroid or center of gravity. And on our right hand side, we can see certain diagrams. So you've got a rectangle. So a rectangle center of gravity is going to be at the center um, for a triangle the center of gravity is actually going to be it's actually one third one over three of height of the h so if this is the h uh, the center of gravity is going to be one over three one over third so yeah, these are the locations of the center of gravity yeah, for a lot of uh, surfaces in 2D. All right, so if you look at uh, this one, this is the triangle. This is B. So if you're looking for where is our distance X, this is distance X is going to be B over three. So here to here is going to be one over one over third, and uh, distance y. Where is our y? This is our y. To the bottom. Again, it is one over three times h. So this is for every uh every triangle. It doesn't matter how does it look like. It can be configured. This way, still one over third. You can be configured it this way, still one over third. So if you uh, rotate the triangle, so it's going to be one over third over here, lah. But to the top axis. So to the to the base of it. One over third, to the base. Okay. So we're talking about reference datum. So CG is going to be here, 1 over 3rd. If you rotate it back, uh, CG is somewhere here. Still 1 over 3rd. So you've got uh, other things like uh, quarter circles. All these things you don't really need to memorize. Lah. You can just refer to diagrams. But triangle is so common, you should remember this one. For R over 3 pi, this is for quarter circle, how to find the X dimension and Y dimension, semicircle, center of gravity is somewhere here, quarter ellipse, semi ellipse, so you can refer here. Lah. So how do you really calculate uh, center of gravity for composite bodies? In order to find out what is the distance of x and what is the distance of y you have to refer to this formula so this is the formula that you have to refer to uh, x is a summation of uh, x times a and divided by summation of all the a's and also same case for y 
It's the summation of all summation uh, y times a divided by summation a. You are going to get uh, how you are going to do it. So in order to do this, I think I need to do a small example. Very easy example. Let's say if I were to put another slide here. Blank slide. Okay, so we'll do another example. So let's say if you have a rectangle. This looks horrible. If you have a huge rectangle. So obviously, center of gravity is going to be at the center of the rectangle. Um, if you have a different shape, for example, a composite, probably another rectangle here, a smaller one here. So now you, your center of gravity definitely will be shifted away. How do you find out the new center of gravity for this shape. You can find out for individually, but when you combine them together, how do you find it out? For example, if object 1 added, added to object 2 becomes this object, where is the center of gravity is probably here. Uh, so how do you find out the location? You need to find out the location from a certain reference. Uh. For example, you're trying to find the dimension with respect to this bottom reference. Uh, this is your y bar and next uh, probably you need to find from this axis. So this will be your x bar. So this one is definitely correct. So this is the method that you are going to find out. Lah. So you need to find out the summation of x times your small uh, areas divided by a. Mm, this one has to be n. Uh, individual parts. This one total of all. Lah. So this one you need to find out for 1 and then you need to find out for 2 and then you need to find out uh, this one is total uh, 1 plus 2 so something like that. So this one works for x. So this is something that we are going to be doing. Uh. Okay so now once you've got uh, the idea of how to do this so let's do a real example okay. Okay so let's do an example a simple one. Let's say I've got this small rectangle We'll make it simple uh, 2 meter by 2 meter This one will be 1 meter by 1 meter obviously so definitely center of gravity for individual is going to be here and then it's going to be here. So we are taking uh, this location as origin uh, O. So this is the reference. This is the reference axis. So let's find out when you merge them together, what is the new location of center of gravity? So let's do this. So there's supposed to be a table, right? So let's say this is object number one. Eh? This is object number two. How are we going to do this? Eh? Object number one first. Eh? So uh, location of this one. What do we call this one? Eh? Y1. What do we call this one? X1. This one is obviously y2 
uh, y2 is over here so x2 x2 is going to be very far away ah eh? oh, there x2 so let's let's do this <coughs> so look at the formula again if you're not sure this is the formula summation of the small x times your area so let's do for object number one first this one uh, summation of x what is the value of x one meter y so easy uh, one meter or so y2 0 0.5 x2 2 plus ma 0 0.5 so about 2.5 meter so let's do for object number one first so you need to find out i think we're going to be doing both already eh? so x is equivalent to uh, 1 meter kali dengan area dia area ni definitely 2 kali 2 4 meter squared and this one is going to be 1 meter squared <coughs> x adalah 1 meter area dia adalah 4 campur ini x dia berapa 2.5 2.5 kali dengan area dia 1 divide by uh, remember what is this this one is summation x a divide by summation a so jumlah ini adalah 4 campur 1 so what you get here 4 campur 2.5 divided by 5 so what do you get 4 plus 2.5 divided by 5 so x is actually 1.3 meter so y sama dengan let's write this down huh? summation y a divided by Summation A. Y A. So for object one, this is for object one. This is for object number two. So object one is going to be one meter, kali dengan area dia empat. Campo, zero point five meter kali dengan area dia satu. Divide by same lah four plus one same area so 5 or so so you can it's going to get 4 plus 0 0.5 divided by 5 so dapat 4.5 bahagi 5 dapat 0 0.9 actually 0 0.9 meter so this is the new uh, coordinates x Y coordinate jadi 1.3 0 0.9 So where is it? So for the new object When they are combined The whole block happens to be mm, Like this lah Oops The whole block It's a combined block. So starting from this as 0, x, you're going to move 1.3. Shift it a little bit. So this was the original location. Eh? So this is 1. So it's going to be 1.3. Somewhere around. Somewhere around here. Slightly a bit more. Uh, 
1.3 for x and y is going to be 0 0.9 slightly lower slightly lower so hmm. so combination of them both you're gonna get a center of gravity somewhere here new cg okay so this is the new method lah. so you can uh, check out a more complicated example this one this is a more complicated example so in this uh, example you have uh, one object is it this one two object three object So you can do it like that or you can do it like on one big object this one is object number two and then you minus this this void minus and then you do for the triangular one so you can try out uh, this example to find out what is the new coordinate or cg for this one okay so uh, center of gravity pretty much that's it we're not gonna go uh, too detailed in center of gravity because this is uh, easily solved especially when you are using computers so later on when you're using uh, CAD software any CAD software probably you're going to be learning using uh, SOLIDWORKS or CARTIA so if you were to design certain parts for example this part you have this origin this is your zero 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 this is your origin coordinate system xyz so you can check out uh, for example in SOLIDWORKS you can check out using evaluate go to mass properties and uh, calculate the center of gravity so let's check out what's the value here so this object is uh, the weight is 674 grams the density it is set here to be 0 0.01 grams per cubic millimeter this is the volume surface area yeah this is your center of mass cg where is this calculated it is calculated about this axis lah, x y z so there is always a reference axis lah, coordinate system in your CAD system. So it doesn't automatically go to the center of your object. Always calculate with respect to your coordinate system. So X, Y value and Z value. So normally they're going to depict lah, where is the location. Uh, other than that, you have uh, other uh, properties. For example, moment inertia. This is the values of the moment inertia. Other things we're going to learn. So you can easily do this. So center of gravity, center of gravity is very important. Lah. Why is it so? It can really determine the stability of your object. So let's say you are designing uh, something funny. What? Uh? You are trying to design let me what can I do here screen white screen let's say you are designing a cordless vacuum cleaner so for example this is the rod this is the vacuum cleaner and you design this to be cordless this is the trigger button for the cordless vacuum cleaner this is probably the uh, cartridge tank for suction you're gonna have turbulent hints here so uh yeah you, you suck all your dirt inside it goes inside it goes inside it goes inside so in order for the user to use this comfortably on his hands he is holding this one right so how this is going to look like huh? where is his thumb 
he is holding it like that so where when you design you need to know where is the location of center of gravity if you design your uh, vacuum cleaner vacuum what brand the best is probably Dyson very expensive one if you design your center of gravity to be very low here C G very low your user the person is going to feel that this vacuum cleaner is very 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 user unfriendly because it's very heavy you have uh, the whole center of gravity here so your weight will be here so there will be a lot of moments that he has to do a lot of moments that he has to do in order to work with this vacuum cleaner so you need to shift as much as possible the CD shift 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 the best is probably here somewhere here ah, if your CG is here the weight is here the user does not feel uh, that he need to do a lot of work when you are doing the moments because the weight has been shifted to the handle itself so as you as you design must update centroid or center of gravity uh, this is a very typical example other things you can think of your own lah. so always update your center of gravity as you design so where do you do that uh, do it here for example in SOLIDWORKS go to your evaluate tab okay so that's all for uh, center of gravity it is very complicated in the books but we don't really need it we're going to be applying so next things that we're learning is something called uh, friction as you can see here uh, this is a wheel the wheel of a bicycle so the wheel of the bicycle it has all these bricks so you've got this rubber rubber lining so this rubber lining is uh, being pressed against the rim right so when you apply load when you apply force there will be a frictional force applied to the surface and you're going to slow down your wheel you're going to slow down your bicycle so this one is a picture of somebody grinding an object uh, using a grinding wheel machine so you grind away all the excess uh, welding make it more smooth whatsoever so if you look uh, closely microscopically in between the surfaces you're going to see roughness even though if you have a flat surface under a microwave it's going to be wavy and jagged and jagged if you look at it microscopically so this contributes to the frictional forces when you apply any forces mm, parallel to the surface okay so all right let's look at more examples so friction typically um, we can define it as the force that resists the movement between two contacting surfaces resist this is the important one eh? resistance resistance between two contacting surfaces friction force is always opposing the direction of motion uh, macam kotak ni lah kan katalah kamu nak gerakkan dia ke kanan uh, move kanan to the right hand side friction it will make your life harder 
it's going to stop you from doing that this is friction punya forces normally we note it down as uh, fs because you've got uh, static friction and you've got kinetic friction so we'll get on to this later so typically there are two types of friction you've got fluid friction or you have dry friction so fluid friction uh, it is in the presence of liquid lubricant or gases uh, dry friction when you have nothing of those things uh. so look at this diagram so this is a very important concept that you need to understand uh. concept so P is trying to go to the right hand side so friction will oppose the motion so going up is the normal force W is this one uh, which is equivalent to mg so frictional uh, static is mu s kali dengan n n adalah normal force mu s adalah coefficient of friction so what is the coefficient of friction we're going to see later so typically coefficient of friction depends on what type of material do you have for example if you have metal on ice the value is going to be somewhere around here so if you were to analyze it depending on your case lah maybe you can take an average at the center in order to decide what is the value of friction uh, other things if you have for example wood on wood 0.3 to 0.7 leather on wood aluminium on aluminium is huge eh? 1.1 to 1.7 so the significance of this is so you have to look at for example the block just now this is the block uh, let's say the block is uh, 20 kilo so you've got mg going down mg the normal surface will be here normal so if you look at this problem if yes uh, if you're doing uh, summation fy is equal to zero going up is positive you are going to get negative mg plus normal is equal to zero normal is going to be equivalent to the mg itself uh. so this is um, yeah this is normal let's say this box you are trying to push it trying to push to the right hand side so this is the direction of motion uh. you are trying to push push you're going to be you're giving a small force p since you're trying to push to the right this box is kind of trying to move to the right so you're trying to move to the right so friction cannot la, be like this friction forces cannot be like this why because friction is always making your life hard friction will definitely going to oppose the motion oh again so this box is probably sitting on the floor huh? it's sitting on the floor so friction this one will make your life hard so friction if it is uh, static meaning it is not moving you are going to be using uh, static friction mu s so fs sama dengan mu s kali dengan normal so kalau benda ala ni metal on ice frictional forces sama dengan katalah 0.04 tengah-tengah eh kali 
kali mg lah 20 kali 20 kali 9.81 so what you get this one is, is a case for metal on ice 0 0.04 0.04 kali 20 kali 9.81 kecil ajalah 7.85 newton force so if you were to apply 7.85 newton force here kalau kamu apply 7.84 newton this box will not move anymore will not move yet if you apply 7.85 newton this box also will not move why the opposing uh, frictional forces is the same so you need to apply at least 7.86 newton so if you apply 7.86 newton this box will move so the limit on whether the box will move or not is this one lah, 7.85. If this were the case lah, metal on ice. Let's say this is aluminium on aluminium. So the value change, no longer 0 0.04, it's going to be 1.1 to 1.7. Let's say I'm being pessimistic in my design. I want to take the worst case scenario. Let's say I take 1.7 kali 20 kali 9.81 berapa? 1.7 kali 20 kali 9.81 newton. 5 newton so you can see a huge difference one is 7 newton only the other one is 300 over so you can change the behavior of things easily by altering the frictional the frictional value the frictional uh, the frictional coefficient of things I think we have an example for this huh? so let's move on so uh, uh, this one is a great example when you are looking at friction so this is a hovercraft it uses uh, dual fans two fans so these two fans uh, actually generate a lot of uh, wind energy oh not two uh. this is the propeller fans you have another big fans here at the center there is another fan here this fan actually blows air downwards blows air down and it creates a uh, air cushion So this very heavy object, this very heavy uh, ship, hovercraft, it is floating on air. So since it floats on air, it can propel itself uh, faster. Why? Because you have very minimum friction. So I don't have air. There's probably some rubbing to the surface at the bottom, lah, but basically it's creating uh, air cushion so we don't have hovercraft in uh, Malaysia probably if we were to have it probably in terms of military transport but hovercraft it's available in UK probably uh, for, com for commercial use these are some of the examples. Huh? Examples of friction is a lot, all right? So there's a lot of friction that you can do to alter things. So for friction, uh, example is not, it's not so much. So let's do this example. 
this is a box. The P value is 200 Newton. P macam ni eh. P is 200 Newton. Box ni adalah 50 kilo. Coefficient of static friction between the crate and the ground is 0 0.3. So, so we didn't follow this one. Uh, I didn't explain this one. So basically you have uh, static and you also have kinetic. So if it were, if you look at here, so this is a graph of F versus P. How do you look at this? Huh? So uh, the thing that I'm trying to tell you is if you're trying to push a box, the static friction is definitely higher compared to kinetic. So you are going to have a lot of resistance in static. So later on, when the box starts motion, so this is the position where you have no motion. When your box starts to move, your frictional coefficient will drop. So this is the mu k region. This is mu s region. So just uh, imagine you're trying to push a box. It's very hard to get. It's very hard to get this box to move. But once the box starts to move, your uh, force required to maintain the motion drops a bit. Why? Static friction is always higher for example if uh, mu s is around 0 0.3 mu k is probably around 0 0.2 or 0 0.15 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 probably so static friction coefficient is definitely more than kinetic Kinetic, everything moves, becomes uh, lower. All right, we have example. Eh? How many examples? Huh? One, two, three, four. Mm. Oh, there's a lot. Huh? It's about half an hour. Okay, so we'll do this one first. 200 Newton. It's going to the right hand side. So obviously one thing is missing here. We don't have dimensions. Eh? There's no dimension. We don't have the dimension of the box. So since we don't have the dimension of the box, we are treating this huge box as a small particle. We don't have uh, the dimension. If we don't have the dimension, it's easier, much, much easier. So we are treating this uh, huge thing as a particle. So this huge thing becomes one small particle. Like that. So this is the force. This is your mg. This is your normal. You are trying to push ka? Determine the friction level. You're trying to push. Kotak ni nak pergi kiri ya. Dia nak pergi kiri. Move kiri. So frictional forces will oppose the motion. Fs is equal to mu s kali normal. So something like that. Lah. Particle 200 Newton. Normal. Uh, this is your simple free body diagram. So that's how you do it. If it 
were better you can uh you can draw here mg normal friction here don't have to draw like that uh. maybe yeah half like that so this is uh fs times mu s kali normal what else uh? any other forces that i have to take care of course this one you have to resolve uh. if we were to resolve it it's going to be like like this uh. one another one like this this is 200 kali dengan uh, hypotenuse tak bawah 5 this is 3 wrong horizontal 4 4 this one is 200 divide by 5 3 that's it lah. Although you have this uh, model like this, it's actually particle. You assume it to be a particle. Okay, so let's do this. How to do this? Summation fx equals zero. To the right is positive. Static tak apa lagi. To the right is positive. Nanti dynamics different. Arah motion is positive. So which one is easier to look at? Do you look here? Or do you look here? Mana sedang nak tengok? Definitely... It is susah kan? Look here. This one better. It is simplified for you to look. So look at here. This one you can really really see what's the force going on. So look here. So uh, Fx. Ini kiri eh. Hmm. Kena tengok sini juga eh. Why? Because of this lah. Uh, Gonna resolve me. Okay, you have to resolve, right? Uh, summation fx. So, two ratus, two hundred four over five. Hmm, betul eh? To the left, to the left, negative. Plus. Uh, mu S kali normal Inilah This one Apa lagi eh Apa lagi tak I don't see ya. Eh? I don't see anything else This one equals zero Why zero? It is static It's not moving So mu S Hmm Apa dia nak ni P 200 Determine the friction develop between all of senang ya. Mu S kali dengan normal sama dengan 200 4 over 5. So mu S tahu kan 0.3. So, dapat 0 0.3 kali normal sama dengan Bukan pelik je 0.3 kali normal sama dengan hmm, This is weird eh Perhaps this is wrong To the left Is there anything left out? Hmm Okay, this one looks weird. So I'm gonna leave it. Leave it first. Let's check out summation fy block. Apa tadi? Summation fy is equal to zero. 
going up is positive. Mg going down, Mg, eh? So, Mg negative. Better to write like this, huh? Normal, tolak, Mg. Normal ni uh, support reaction lah. And then you've got uh, minus 200 3 over 5 equals 0 friction tak adalah ok so normal ni lain pelik you cannot solve this similarly dapat normal sebab the normal dia bergantung kepada uh, your weight so normal is actually mg plus berapa 200 kali 3 bahagi 5 120 eh 120 mg berapa berat dia tuan Newton Ay, 50 kilo ok 50 9.81 plus 120 50 kali 9.81 campur 120 610 610 point 5 newton this is the normal value betul lah kita buat ni so plug in plug in here apa nak dapat macam ni Tak dapat apalah. Sebab apa dia suruh cari ni? Uh, determine the friction develop. Maksud dia suruh cari Fs. Oh, I see. Dia suruh cari Fs. Fs sama dengan mu S kali normal. Sama dengan 0.3 kali lah dengan 610.5. Tui kedak ni. Kali 0.3 183 hmm. Is there anything missing? Normal going up Minus mg 3 over 5 200 3 over 5 200 kali 3 Bahagi lima Lima puluh kilo Correct already This one is correct This one is correct Frictional is 0 0.3 Hmm 0 0.3 kali 6 1 0 0.5 Apa hal pula F ni? Let's check out the answer. Betul lah aku dapat eh. 0.3 kali 610.5 183 183.2 Newton. Tengok jawapan. Mm -mm -mm. F is less than F max So Mu S kali N 0.3 dapat 183.15 Therefore F is equal to 160 Newton Apa lek ni ni mm, Determine the friction develop between 50 kilogram crate F is less than F max. Probably there's something missing in my question. Eh? F is less than F max. 0.3 kali 610. Before F. Oh, this is weird. This is weird. Probably something left in uh, the question itself. Tapi betul lah kita dapat ni. 183.15 lah. 
If it's greater than 183.15 Newton, the box is going to move. Otherwise, it's just going to stay put. Okay, leave it at there. Okay, next question. How long have we been doing this? It's about an hour. Uh. Mm, okay, let's do one more. Lah. Do one more. This is a rod. It can be a tangga letak kat dinding. Tangga kita panggil apa? Tangga is stairs. Ladder. It can be a ladder. Determine the minimum force P. Minimum force P. To prevent the 30 kg rod from sliding. Maksudnya dia nak jatuh. Dia nak turun bawah. You want to support. Ah, itulah cerita dia. Friction static between the rod and the wall is mu S kali 0.2. Wall. This is a wall. Obviously. This is the floor. Contact surface at B is smooth. Contact surface at B. Mana B? Ni B. So, sini adalah smooth. Licin. Uh, wall ni kasar. So, ada friction. Wall is kasar. Ada friction. This is smooth. Ah, okay lah. So, everybody understand the problem? So, now let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the one thing that we have to do lah whenever we look at things. When uh, you guys are analy analyzing any mechanical systems, you have... Oh... It's weird. You have to consider something called free body diagram. Obviously. So, uh, let's draw free body diagram. Paling senang sekali MG. Eh. MG duduk tengah. So, MG is here. Apa lagi ada? Uh, bila MG, ini ada support. Support is like that lah. So, obviously, support kita label dia sebagai uh, normal, probably. So, normal location B. So, letaklah N, B. Ini pula A. Kan, support ni dia tak boleh turun bawah, kan? Dia boleh gerak kanan kiri. So, direction that it cannot move, that is the direction of uh, reaction force. So, dekat A, direction yang dia tak boleh move kat sini. This direction. So, you give it a name, normal A. MG sini uh, NA sini Apa lagi yang sangkut lah Anything else am I missing NB, NA, blah blah MG is of course middle lah Middle of Ini So distance MG ni Mestilah halfway 2 meter Habis lah Dia kata cari ni Cari minimum force P. Hmm. Okay, so that's all. So let's solve. Summation Fx is equal to 0. Why? Because it is static. It's not moving. To the right is positive. Horizontal. Ada ni je lah. Na. Ada lagi ke? Ada ni. P. P. So, P tolak NA. Apa lagi ketinggalan? What's left? Is equal to zero. See? Your mathematics is so simple. Uh, but you have to digest the whole, the whole problematic that you are looking at. You got to draw free body diagram. Free body diagram is in the blood of mechanical engineers. Uh. P minus NA. Hmm, that's it. Good. Let's try and uh, uh, others. 
summation fy is equal to zero because it is static it's not moving going up is a positive so you've got and b lepas tu you have uh, eh friction kan there you go coefficient of static friction ada so this wall is trying to move down so friction will support it also obviously friction so dia ada mu s kali normal a kan sini smooth over here is smooth smooth you don't delete the things ah huh? when you delete you forget sini smooth sini move this is friction Oh, mm, X okay je X is fine Y Y I'm missing a lot lah And B naik atas MG Obviously Minus MG Plus Mu S times normal A Normal A juga lah mm, Anything else Y direction I think that's it. Simplify. And B cannot do anything. Plus mu S is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 normal A is equal to MG. So. Ini jadi berapa? 30 kilo. 30 times 9.81 sama dengan 30 times 9.81 294.3 is equivalent to NB plus 0 0.2 NA obviously you cannot do anything lah so you got this one equation you have this two equation how many unknowns do we have satu dua tiga three unknowns three unknowns so definitely you need to pull out one more gun lah one more senjata sulit so you've got summation moment luckily ya uh. nak cari kat mana cari dekat banyak unknowns lah cari kat b lah don't look at a you get two one information here cari dekat b this is your secret weapon counterclockwise is positive Mm. Ini tak minat lah no. So you have to think a bit ah. Think B Location B kat ni This is B So you are here B Where are you ah? This is you You are here You look very happy B, B, B. Okay. So. Moment. Ini tak terlibat lah. It's not involved. Not involved. Ini macam tu. This one is a negative. Friction is a positive. This one is a positive. So, there are three things lah involved. Let's. Write them down. Negative mg kali 2 meter plus 
normal a multiply 3 normal a friction plus mu s 0 0.2 eh 0 0.2 normal a is equal to 0 really ah 3 is this correct minus 39.81 2 plus Tiga kali normal A Normal A kali distance Ha ni salah ni Point tu kali normal A Kena kali lagi Dia tidak ada distance 4 meter ha. Make sure you are doing it correctly Don't be confused with brackets Brackets will make you think that you have multiplied by the distance, but you need you not yet. So this is going to be three and a. This is going to be part kali part kali point two zero point eight eh zero point eight and a equals zero. So dapat berapa eh? 3.8 NA sama dengan 30 kali 9.81 kali 2 588.6 588.6 so normal A sama dengan answer bahagi 3.8 154.9 154.9 Eh Okay Alright, alright, alright So normal A dapat jawapan eh 154.9 So look at the first equation we find here From here P is equal to 154.9 So you got it So this is the P lah Macam mana? Susah lah Senang Gila <laughs> Alright so Let's solve for the first part Thank you We'll follow We'll have a short break And We'll continue